Banana Podcast. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Come on in. The water's just fine. Welcome to this episode of Better Than a Podcast, a show where I don't really have a real name for it. And really, it's just the reason for me to do my conquest chores while talking to you amazing people about a variety of topics I want to dip my fingers into. As always, we're co-hosted with Gary. The, the thoughts, the inspiration, the insight he provides, a second to none. That's why we keep bringing this guy on. So today's topics are going to be the following. Lord Vader, not trash! Saw Gerrera, not trash! Chaotic Mundi, not trash! I wonder how much hearing damage is caused by listening to me. And the biggest thing of all is Galaxy of Heroes in trouble. Due to a recent game closure of a similar style game, I've been seeing some conversation worrying about this game. We'll answer all that right after this. (laughs) Welcome to my lair, everyone, where I, the king of mobile games, in the palm of my hand, can create my own champions to play with. And I'm talking about today's sponsors, Bloodline! Bloodline Heroes of Lithius is one of the most unique hero collector RPG games that's on the market. It's got great 3D graphics, and you can build your own kingdom, collect your champions, and even breed your champions together to create new ones. Combine different styles into one. Take them into game modes like the Guild War. New Bloodlines and legendary hybrids are added constantly, like the new addition of the Tide Razors, powerful demigods that originated from the fiercest sea. With their bloodline, you'll create new fierce heroes. Download this game for for the link down below or my QR code, and you'll get yourself a free starter pack worth over $20. So what are you waiting for? Get bloodline and create your new ultimate generation of fierce warriors. Before we get into our lovely Conquest gameplay, just a reminder, in case you haven't seen it already, the online web store for Galaxy Heroes has a Conquest daily freebie energy. I'm guessing maybe conquest engagement's kind of low and they're trying to boost it up nonetheless free stuff's free stuff you get 15 to 100 energy and of course don't forget as well there's a september mystery chest daily chest with random energy that's useful for the other parts of the game and some useful shards for a variety of important things and if you can't get it uh moment of silence all right let's keep on moving let's roll the gameplay all right so the first point of conversation we gotta talk about is this right here there's a similar styled galaxy of Heroes game for the DC Universe. Batman, Superman, all that other fun stuff, as you guys probably know. Uh, they had a very random announcement. It kind of came out of nowhere uh, less than a day ago, where they had to make the difficult decision to close DC Legend. Now, that game came out in January 2016. Still a fairly decent run. What is that? For almost, uh, I'll go almost eight, what is that? Almost eight years or so, right? I can't do math. Yeah, it came out shortly after Galaxy of Heroes. So it's kind of had a pretty good run you got to keep in mind mobile games lasting as long as this even dc legends that's kind of a, a solid feat for a game like that now the, the question i've been seeing a lot <laughs> as a result because it's such a similar game sometimes because similar game means it's gonna suffer the same consequence i'm gonna put that to east eve as the biggest critic of galaxy heroes and it deserves a lot of the criticism that it gets i can safely assure before we even look at the numbers here galaxy of heroes is not an immediate demise it's not like you know other industries or one one uh, one thing one corporation industry falls like there might be like this domino effect i don't think we're seeing anything like that here it's very competitive the mobile gaming genre in general so here's what i kind of want to show you guys why dc legends close i think it's you know before we even look at anything you know it's pretty simple no money no game that's kind of what it looks like here and i think another thing to point out here is that they're completely shut down the servers you can't even get the game anymore they they already turned it off google play so i don't think i can download it even if i wanted to and again remember when the game goes away even galaxy is one day it might happen you don't get your money back so there's no more game to play it's not like some other games where when there's like servers go, when uh, let's for example one of my favorite games modern warfare 2 the old school modern warfare 2 you can still get the game you can still play the game uh, on the xbox you can still play it online and pc i don't know if they fix their issues but you could play on pc as well so long as there's not a crazy amount of hacks going on here with a lot of mobile games we saw that with star wars commander star wars force they just yanked that sucker so the point i'm getting at is uh there, one day likely the, the, the sun will set on galaxy i don't think it's anytime soon that should mean a lot coming from me so here is basically at the end of the day what we need to look at so i have some numbers pulled up here from sensor tower and i'm gonna say i think these numbers are gonna be on the little bit of the lower side 
because it doesn't track data for people spending on the web store. Now, how many people spend on the web store? I can't imagine as much as people spend on, for example, iOS or the Google Play Store. I would, I don't know. I'm probably going to be maybe a little bit generous. I expect at least another one to two million sales on the web store. I don't buy stuff on the web store. It's not convenient. I don't feel like I get any additional value compared to the Google Play points. And Google Play points are a bit more flexible. We're not going to get into that conversation. We're just putting it out there. The numbers I'm laying down aren't going to be 100% accurate because of that web store. So they're going to make even more than I'm showing here. So let's take a look at EA on Sensor Tower. EA's most successful game in general when it comes to the mobile genre is uh, FIFA football or FIFA soccer. That game uh, alone, just what month was this? This was this, 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 last month. So I believe this was August. August, that game alone, that made $14 million and it had 2 million, it had 9 million new downloads. That's pretty nuts. That's, so that game's doing pretty well. But second in command when it comes to EA's portfolio, when it comes to the mobile gaming genre, we have Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And again, before even looking at the web store, we're looking at in total between iOS and Google, we're looking at about 7 million. And I don't know, maybe just drop on, let's just say another million. I, can't, I don't think that's too far-fetched of a number. Another million, maybe, I don't know. I can't imagine it being more than two, but one seems like a good number. So you're looking at about 8 million for Galaxy of Heroes just in the last month. That is a lot of moolah, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, Galaxy is well beyond a $1 billion game, and I suspect over time it's gonna hit a two billion dollar it makes no financial sense to shut down a game worth let's be honest i mean really i i'm, I'm guessing the bulk of their expense is the, the the human cost to develop all these new characters that come to star wars galaxy heroes and of course licensing fees google and uh, ios and uh, as well as uh ea getting their cut out of the game that's part of the bulk of their expen uh, expenses there's still a lot of money to be on the table let's put this in contrast what was going on with dc legends now dc legends in the warner brothers portfolio it was not a number one or number two contender like Galaxy of Heroes was for EA. DC Legends, when we look at the iOS side of things, they made a hundred thousand dollars last month. And then what about Android? Well, on Android, they made sixty thousand dollars. Now I don't know if they have a web store like Galaxy of Heroes does, Marvel Strike Force. I know Lord of the Rings, Heroes of Middle Earth recently added a web store just like a week or so ago. I don't imagine that they made that much more money if they did have a web. Or so uh dc legends made hundred sixty thousand dollars last month that is even though it still sounds like a lot of money when you consider the ios fees the google fees i'm not sure uh, you know since warner brothers owns the I, I don't know how the licensing works for dc and warner brothers i'm assuming because warner brothers i believe owns dc they might not have to worry as much about that at the end of the day, $160,000 is not a lot of moolah to keep a live service mobile game that wants new characters and all that stuff up and running. So right there, hopefully the point's kind of made that Galaxy is nowhere near that problem. I think on the upside, here's the here's kind of the silver lining. Although it sucked, I hate when people, like I was reading some of the comments on people that play the game, like, man, it feels like a part of me just died today. And, you know, a lot of people play these games for many years as part of their daily routine. So it, it sucks when some people's games that they love, they just go away. I, I, I hate when that happens. It's just a fact that matters. If it's not making money, it's not going to stick around. But the silver lining is here. Warner Brothers is a uh, DC Legends. It was around since 2016. And they are still able to kick around and let people enjoy the game as long as it did. So that's the silver lining. Apparently, we need to get a new team up and running. Hold the phone for a second. All right, time for some clone action, y'all. To the point I'm getting at, I don't know when that cutoff is, when EA's like Galaxy Heroes is just turning out to be a burden and not a, not a financial uh, uh, contributor to our portfolio. But the point is, 160000 versus, you know, what do we say? $8 million. Kind of a big stark contrast between those two games. But nonetheless, even if we lose, let's say, another half part player base, I think right now that daily active users, somewhere around 300 some thousand. When you look at the 5v5 Grand Arena signups, uh, we still, I think, have a long way before that. So again, as someone who, yes, when I when CG does something, I'm going to call them out. I'm going to criticize them because just because they're making a lot of money doesn't mean, oh, we got to give them a pass. You know, we got to make sure we set things straight and narrow when it comes to things that we don't don't like about this game we want this game to be successful we want this game to keep on running i'm just putting it out there uh this isn't like a lot of other industries just because one game falls that's of a similar genre doesn't mean another game's gonna fall that's of a similar genre not a, not a very good line of logic when it comes to that regard if anything if i was to be concerned about a game it might be something more like lord of the rings heroes of middle earth i was actually looking uh, lord of the rings heroes of middle earth is not seeing the same success not even close to the initial success of star wars galaxy of heroes not gonna go into it it, it was a game that 
you know people wanted me to see it, uh, see me play i there i had every reason to make videos on it i just didn't like the game i'm not gonna force them to make videos on a game that i'm not liking and it seems like we're kind of seeing that being the same reaction for just the gaming community at large especially the mobile gaming community when we look at lord of the rings heroes of middle earth just from last month and keep in mind they just opened up their web store so i don't think they're gonna quite have they're not gonna have extra money on the table like we see for galaxy of heroes but with lord of the rings heroes of middle earth they made five hundred thousand dollars last month on the ios side of things and on the google side of things they ended up making four hundred thousand so that game hasn't e hit a, 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 even a million dollars for the last month and so right just there and there it's not nearly the same success as galaxy galaxy had some really strong success in its first two months that it came out lord of the rings here the middle earth doesn't seem to be having that same success I, of course i can make a full video talking about it but we're not gonna bore you guys with all those details for the moment so if anything if there was a game to be concerned that i know some of you guys play it might be lord of the rings here's the middle Earth, but as we saw the dc legends i think it's gonna take a long time for that cutoff to happen they're like hey, you know we're just not making the money to justify all these costs i think they're still a bit away from that but it's one of those games where if i was a fan of lord of the rings here's the Middle Earth, i'd be the game i'd be slightly more concerned maybe not as concerning as dc legends was and definitely galaxers is nowhere near that so that's awesome to say galaxers should still have a lot of leeway to be playing around for a little bit longer come on clones can you get no 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 come on get these kills get the kill no drop some hits over there and eh, you gotta be kidding me don't you <laughs> all right so that's gonna wrap up our conversation on that again i think galaxers has quite a few years left and it's so long as they have characters to pull for and as long as they don't just completely screw up their game you gotta keep in mind it's not so much that galaxy of heroes is a great game it's just a star wars ip is so powerful and strong so i think probably stronger than dc and lord of the rings it definitely helps out i mean lord of the rings has been made by the same developers pretty much the same game you know there's not the same love being given out for that type of game uh, so i think it's got a lot of legs on it still for the foreseeable future y'all let's move on to our next point of conversation all right next thing on the list here i i saw a lot of fun reddit posts i really wanted to kind of talk to and react about i want to give a shout out to uh necro king 695 they unlocked lord vader the other day congratulations again i don't care what you're unlocking getting an unlock of any sort is a huge deal especially a galactic legend massive deal so massive congratulations they unlocked him about four days ago and i love i got a good laugh a couple days later i'm like wait th didn't i just see this post a couple days ago i'm sure it took the guy a couple days to gear him up and then uh, just uh, yesterday he comes out saying you all are wrong lord vader's amazing i absolutely love this guy just came out he did like one battle he's like screw you guys i played one battle i beat an slkr you know you guys suck and i love this right here <laughs> everyone who says he sucks is wrong full stop well god dang gary he said full stop i guess we just we can't say anything about it he said full stop it's ended the conversation there <laughs> first thing i want to say again i'm super happy necro king is enjoying his unlock here i always love the lord vader conversation because people <laughs> <laughs> people get heated on both sides of the conversation and then also i love the comments people seem to misconstrue what i say because then i get to play well it's Otto's fault lord failure you know <laughs> he started the whole thing i always thought here's here we go let's, let's i guess we could just take the time to kind of you know remind people what my uh, stance and opinion is on the character if you haven't seen it actually I, I'm, I, I'm hoping to do my updated galactic legends ranking now that we're almost to a new layout i think it's a good time to sit down and review our current galactic legends lineup don't seem to watch my videos and they just hear a line from passing here saying they're like oh man that Arnold guy's an idiot they're not completely wrong <laughs> but uh, let's remind people things getting a galactic legend of any of them is a big deal a galactic legend at the end of the day is a galactic legend full stop see what i did there uh, the thing about it is though not all galactic legends are equal and one battle versus supreme leader kylo ren on defense which let's be honest not very common but i think for this person is probably common Neko king probably might be you know maybe in bronzium chromium maybe a rhodium or maybe in the lower parts of squad arena where there's a lot of supreme leader kylo ren's uh, yeah you know lord vader can beat supreme leader kylo ren that full stop <laughs> on defense but you, you, of course we gotta have a much grander picture of things you can't just beat supreme leader kylo ren and be like he's amazing yeah there's a lot of things that beat supreme leader kylo ren as well as every other galactic legend they have counters to some extent the problem is if you go back to my actual in-depth galactic legends ranking you know i'll put the old video up if you want to see it but i'm hoping 
hopefully by next week i already did some of the graphs lord vader is it, it, from an objective perspective he is he is awesome in the grand scheme of the game of course but and there's the key thing the but part here when you look at the relative value compared to others how difficult how tough how expensive it is how many resources required to get a galactic and what they can do and how good are they on defense that's where the conversation comes in. and in my opinion when you consider the value and the input need to get lord vader this is where my point comes in i don't see him as good in terms of value compared to other galactic legends even in his own class of release jedi master kenobi is just miles upon miles better keeping data crowns aside and i love the comments here people like to cherry pick data and they're like oh look at what well, look at lord vader's hold against fennec this season i could pick a season with a a, 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 a trashy data crown for lord vader and be like oh look at the fennec data against lord vader you guys can't do that you can't just take one particular thing data crowns especially and say oh you guys are completely wrong about lord vader yeah lord vader's got a pretty solid data crown this is which has ruined the fennec in 3v3 i can still make it work at 5 but the 3v3 rates are kind of low you can't go by that so what i did here is i kind of did just we don't have as much data because data crowns are so prevalent in grand arena now when you just look at data when you strip away data crowns on both the offensive and the defensive side thing with the ideal team of fennec beskar mando boss uh, the other mandalorian but when we look at all this data here and uh, <laughs> you can see that when you take away the data crowns fennec is a very solid off meta counter to lord vader when and especially when you take out maul which i always say maul is the galactic legend portion of lord vader when you take out maul all of a sudden you know the win rates almost double for fennec shan but the point i'm getting at in general for the most expensive galactic legend in the game for me he's the easiest galactic legend to beat i'm able to get through him without usually having to burn a galactic legend unless there's some bonkers data cron thing going on and even in the situations like you know and also people look at the numbers oh 30 percent slow but what does the number mean if someone's able to get through lord vader without a galactic legend because generally at worst a fennec shan uh, lineup is gonna at least pick apart everyone and leave lord vader for a very easy mon motha cleanup imperial trooper cleanup a variety of other types of cleanups out there that's a huge win so you can't just look at just the the win rates and say oh look low win rate means the, the everyone's wrong that's not how it works if someone's able to get through a galactic legend without needing a galactic legend in a very simple way that's kind of a big problem that's why we're kind of seeing java uh, on the cutting board lately because we're seeing right now night sisters are able to get through them, and night sisters have a very low success rate but they, they set up the stage for a very simple cleanup is the point you got to look at here so that's the problem but the difference is java didn't require as much as lord vader did lord vader is very expensive and you need maul to really get the full benefit out of it that's the thing and that's kind of what i was saying earlier you know we kind of got to make sure we criticize things that need to be criticized here I, i'm happy again people are enjoying lord vader. of course he's a galactic legend he's got to be at least pretty good in the game but when you compare him to the rest of his peers cost wise that's where the issues come in. and just again just because one person had a great experience doesn't mean other people did it literally i think in the same day <laughs> someone's like i'm having a hard time winning with my lord vader against master kenobi so again shout out to necker king glad you're loving your character give it more time once you have a fight a lot more stuff out there you might see you might be running into some struggles but it probably in your neck and woods man you're gonna kill him with lord vader uh, that's the great thing about it uh, so it's more of an end game thing when people have fennec's unlock that's when people start getting through lord vader and when you compare it to jedi master kenobi you can see when you bring jedi masters kenobi ideal team there's not a lot of options on the table and that's the stark difference there between lord vader master kenobi it's just mathematically true master kenobi is just a better galactic legend that's easier to get than lord vader and he's not as susceptible to off meta counters as lord vader is the best thing you have is maybe a reva or maybe you do bounty hunters to get rid of cat and you bring in gas but that's a very expensive two shot right there lord vader is probably one of my least performing galactic legend when there's no crazy data crowns skewing things in his favor get data crowns are fake power at the end of the day that are only seasonal to be fair that's kind of what i wanted to put out on the board for that right there i just thought it was a fun conversation every time the lord everything comes out people just whoo, they get heated and i laugh at the comments especially when, when my name comes up because you can tell they don't actually know my full opinion on it when i say trash it's in a certain realm of thing it's a little bit jokey but also in the realm of comparing him to his peers i just find supreme to Kyron better master Cody better job better raise a hell of a lot more annoying for me to handle inside a galaxy was lord vader for me i actually find honest oddly enough set the turn will be more complicated to beat with my style of gameplay i can get through lord vader easily set turn all especially with savage is kind of a bit more challenging for me so that that's just coming from an end game perspective but again everyone's going to be in different spots of the game and some people are going to have a different perspective keep that in mind a lot of my perspective is telling you where that character's viability is going to be in the long run because you're you know see people like oh my padme's amazing uh, my anakin padme is great but once you get down and later on you know padme anakin's not really thing so it's just kind of me giving you the foresight where your character's heading in the future but nonetheless
nonetheless, at the end of the day, even if you don't agree with me still, I'm happier loving the character. I'm not going to convince you to hate the character if you love the character. Uh, speaking of that, no, this actually kind of uh, reminds me of this. You know, like, you know, I, uh, certain Star Wars movies. I, you know, some Star Wars movies aren't my favorite. Like, you know, I'm not crazy about The Last Jedi, but I'm not calling people bad names if they love Last Jedi. I might tease them, but man, I said episode four. I like Ahsoka episode four. Man, the amount of shill comments I've got, and idiot comments I've got. It's like, dude, it's like one of the highest rated Star Wars episodes uh, for TV shows for Disney of all time. And I said, I just thought that was funny. It's like, you know, sometimes at the end of the day, even though, yeah, there might be some points to be made on both sides. If someone enjoys it, let them enjoy it, okay? This was kind of another semi-hot topic on the interweb. Maybe not as heated as Lord Vader again, man. Anytime I see a Lord Vader conversation, you know I'm ch chuckling because it's, it's funny. Everyone's just all over the place with that conversation sometimes. Uh, this came up on Keanu Mundi. Is Cam dead? A post by I Guessma. Doesn't seem like guilds care about light side GOTB anymore. Should we even care about Cam anymore? Uh, so here's the thing. First, remember, you can farm Keanu Mundi uh, with the guild event token a three currency they still they still make it accessible when you're doing rise of the empire because again the game wants to incentivize you to move on to the next big piece of content that they worked on and oftentimes i see this oh well there's uh there's a, what's it called there's a trade-off if you do rise of the empire because you're missing out a uh, caddy mundi shards easier i think it's the other way if you do if you do light side gotb you're trading off not getting the better rewards from rise of the empire so just because people aren't doing light side gotb doesn't mean cam dead i, I think it you could still get cam but just rise of the empire just where most skills should try to focus our efforts. In my free-to-play count, they're trying their best to do Rise of the Empire when the, the light side TV comes out because we suck at light side TV. So like, hey, I might as well do uh, Rise of the Empire. So there might be a lot of people in that situation uh, as well. But here's the thing about, um, I think they're mostly looking at the actual like farming accessibility about is Cam dead? I don't know if they're really talking about the performance aspect of it. There were some comments talking about, oh, Cam is just not a great character. Uh, I, I, well, first, I think they missed the point this person was trying to make. Cam is still farmable, although it's, uh, yeah, I would say maybe it's a little bit trickier you're not getting enough get three currency the good news is cam is one of the he's one of the oddest characters is he trash no he's you know he's a good plug-in for jedi knight revan jedi master luke jedi knight luke's uh cal cast is my favorite use of of course is gonna be uh qui-gon jinn omicron so by no means is he a bad character inside a galaxy but he's kind of weird in the sense that you, he's, you can kind of play galaxy heroes without the guy it's really weird compared to some of the other uh territory battle characters that we've gotten out there it is a it's a little bit odd he's not as great as Watt Timbor but to be fair not a lot of characters in general are as good as Watt Timbor but you know I find them better than you know Rebel Officer Layer Ghana Imperial Probe Droid uh things of that matter so yeah I, this was kind of a weird one I don't think Cam is trash but you definitely I don't think people are even if even if there is an argument to be made that the farming for Cam is a little bit trickier because people are doing Rise of the Empire even if that is true uh I don't know if people are missing out too much without Candy Money of course you want to have him you never know the day they're going to make him required for something or his there's going to be some god tier team that needs Kiati Mundi. Uh, they might create like a full new Jedi Council team with Mace Windu lead or Grand Master Yoda lead and like, oh god, I need to have Kiati Mundi or else this team just doesn't work. That future could totally happen. Speaking of Kiati Mundi, let's bring him out here. We got, we got to do some armor shred stuff for this sector. And the last point of conversation, this really made people scratch their heads. I don't admit, it made my my head scratch itself as well, if that makes any sense. Capital Games, uh, yes out of nowhere uh put out a post saying they're investigating saw guerrera <laughs> and you know me i want saw guerrera to be awesome i haven't found it yet i haven't seen anyone else find anything yet it's just kind of consensus saw guerrera is just not good uh, but apparently they noticed some irregular interactions with saw guerrera against certain galactic legends and will uh and will investigate if any adjustments need to be made we'll keep you posted when we know more so kind of weird right uh, so my guess is here. They said irregular interactions. Irregular means not regular. Wow, Arnold, you're so smart. I know, guys, you don't need to toot my horn. Already kind of knew that. I think what they're saying is that if it's an irregular matchup, it might be looking at Galactic Legends Lay Organa. Galactic Legends Lay Organa very well may have had some sort of powerful synergy with Saw Gerrera, and they're getting ahead of it because they know there's this guy on the YouTube. He's always like, fix your game! 
save CG. And it also proactively, it shows they're kind of ahead on the ball because Leviathan, they're still trying to fix that godforsaken ship after all this time. Uh, so I just think they're trying to avoid another possible Leviathan fiasco or something like that. So my assumption is probably them testing out their characters. Good job, CG. Hey, we got the armor shred knocked down. And I know everyone was scrambling if there was something current. I don't think it's anything current again. They said irregular, so probably something that doesn't exist right now in the game. Literally, when you look up Galactic Legends matchups on defense, there's absolutely no teams that are utilizing Sauger to beat a Galactic Legends. So I don't think we should look too much into it. It was definitely an odd post, but I think it's just showing kind of indirectly. They're kind of bragging, hey, we're testing out our game. Screw you, Arnold. Good job on that. And I think that's going to basically wrap it up right there, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a lot of conquests done, man. I even realized we were playing conquests. It was so much fun chit-chatting with all you amazing people out there. At the end of the day, I, I just want to put out there one more time. Yeah, Galaxers has got his problem. Yes, a lot of their money comes from the fact that they just have the Star Wars license, and without it, they could be in a DC Legends, Lord of the Rings type of situation where they're, they could be struggling. At the end of the day, I am ecstatic that Star Wars Galaxy is a single success that it has. People still enjoy playing it, and at the end of the day, I think we're still far away. You know, one day the sun's gonna set. When that's gonna be, I don't know. I think the game still has a lot of years left in it, so long as they stick to the rough model, they don't screw up too much, and they keep releasing characters people love, and Star Wars in general stays as one of the strongest intellectual properties out there. I think we're all good, and then again, that's coming from me, y'all. So enjoy your week, and thanks for stopping by. Leave that like. Love to hear your thoughts on all these variety topics. A lot of spicy stuff on the menu today. Hopefully, you don't have too much indigestion. And always remember how it's great to be in the Empire today. The sun never sets.